，亲爱的新浪网友，大家好，欢迎收看一周美股特别节目，我是主持人孙思源，现在在纽约市交易大厅为您播报。近来，光大证券乌龙指事件持续引发热议。本期节目，我们有幸邀请到了高频交易专家 Edgar 来听听他对此事有个怎样的点评。So Edgar, glad to have you here on our channel. Thank you very much for inviting me. All right, so the technical glitch happened yesterday on NAS that caused a lot of the discussion, and many people are actually wondering what's the damage, what's the potential loss for you know the retail investor as well as the institutional investor. So what's your take on this? Well, I think there are a couple of things. First of all, people definitely lost money because they were not able to trade for three hours from 12:15 until almost 3:25 p.m. So definitely that's the first part. The second part, of course, is the reputational risk that Nasdaq is now going through. As you can understand, there are going to be some issues with people who are interested in going through an IPO. Should I go to Nasdaq? Should I go to Nasdaq? Or should I go to another country to list my shares? So I think those are the two potential costs I foresee in this after this incident. Okay, and、uh, remember earlier, the Chinese brokerage firm called Everbright had a similar technical glitch, and many people are actually blaming them for doing this. So, do you think it's entirely their fault? Because you know, many people actually think it's it's natural for this kind of thing to happen. Well, obviously, speed now plays a role. We have to be even more prepared than ever to be able to handle these amazing amounts of shares. So, obviously, it, it plays a role. But nonetheless, in the same way that companies are trading now electronically, we also need to be better prepared for that. Either through the same technology the companies need to invest on, and also through regulations that have to be in place to help these companies to navigate this increasingly complicated world. Again, we probably didn't expect to see cars 100 years ago. Now we see millions in the roads, but still, we're able to function. We're able to manage the system, and I think that's also something that we need to work on trading. Because at the end of the day, there's no way people, humans, can manage billions of shares trading in a day. Computers have to be. So, what's your advice to the financial policymakers, both in the U.S. and in China? Well, I think it has to be clear the responsibilities of the trading participants and also the responsibilities of the exchanges. All of them have to be prepared for new era of electronic trading. Therefore, they have to invest more in trading. They have to test their systems better. They have to see the interconnections with other people in the systems. And there are going to be, of course, many complications. And once there's an incident, still they have risk management processes in place, so people can know how to respond to things like yesterday or Nike Capital a year ago. Okay, and that brings me actually to my next question. So I heard that you recently published a book about Nike Capital's rise and fall. So can you introduce a little bit about your book? Indeed, the book is Nike Capital. It's now available at nightmareonwallstreet.com. And basically, what we're trying to do with the book is to demonstrate what happened on August 1st last year, when Nike also went through an incident when they were sending a lot of orders into the markets, and at the end of the day, they couldn't manage it, and there were not risk management processes in place. So I think that's something that eventually we need to work on. Actually, all market participants need to be aware that this is a complicated world, but we have to be better prepared for that. 好的，那么以上就是本期周美股特别节目的全部内容，感谢您的收看，我们下期再会。